Fresh off of my disappointing playthrough of Dauntless, with my RPG itch still unscratched, I downloaded Monster Hunter World. This is my first Monster Hunter game, I haven't played any of the previous titles so I didn't really know what to expect. Little did I know, I was about to embark on a great monster hunting adventure. You start off in what looks like the canteen of a ship that's bustling full of people and some pretty cute cats. You meet a few people and although your character doesn't talk, you find out that you and everyone here are part of the 5th fleet of hunters headed to the new world to solve a problem that has to do with the migration of elder dragons. While introducing yourself to your partner, your ship crashes into a giant volcano. You and your partner have to do some parkour to get out and while you're flying away, you find out that the volcano is actually a giant lava monster moving towards land. Now this is a way you start the game, especially a game that revolves around killing monsters. The very first monster you see is menacing and it changes the entire environment around you. You're left with the feeling that you're nowhere near strong enough to take it down now, but at some point, you will be. After escaping the giant volcano monster, which spoilers, that's an elder dragon, you make your way on foot to Astera, where the commission has set up a base of operations to study the monsters of the new world. Astera will be your home base for the rest of the game and it's beautiful. It's a research hub carved into the side of a mountain and as you look around you'll see that it's filled with character. The floorboards and stairs are made from worn, crudely cut wood, the scaffolding and framework made from the bones of some unknown creature, even whole landings made from the hulls of broken ships. And after a long day of hunting, you can even sit atop the mountain and enjoy the beautiful scenery. Astera feels less like a place of work and more like a community, built by a team of smart individuals who crash landed on a deserted island and had to start a new life with nothing but the resources available to them, hard work, and some Swiss Family Robinson-esque innovation. It's a place befitting of the narrative of researching strange creatures and exploring the unknown of the new world. Without giving away too many spoilers, your quests revolve around investigating new monsters to progress through the story. I'd like to note that the keyword here is investigate. Many times, sure, you'll just kill the monster, but your overarching goal is to learn more about them, so you can actually capture them instead of killing them and complete the quest all the same. But before we go out into the dangerous unknown, we're gonna need a weapon, and there are a lot to choose from. In Monster Hunter World, there are no classes like traditional RPGs. The different types of playstyles come from the 14 different weapons you can choose and switch between at any time. If you prefer high mobility attacks at the cost of damage, you can pick up the dual plates. Or if you prefer hard hitting knockout blows at the cost of speed, consider picking up the hammer. You can even don the hunting horn which plays buffing songs for you and your allies. There's a weapon for every playstyle, but the beauty is you're not locked into just one. At any time you can pick up a different weapon that will completely change the way you play the game and fight different monsters. When going on quests, you won't load directly into the fight with a monster staring right at you. You start off at a campsite and you explore the map looking for different footprints, scratches on trees, and sometimes slobber. With each find, you'll get closer and closer to finding the monster. Calling the ancient forest a map feels like a bit of an understatement. The amount of detail put into this place absolutely astounded me on my first run through. Everywhere you look, the forest is teeming with life, from large benign plant eaters to small colorful bugs and even these things. Most if not everything you come across can be gathered or captured and used later as ingredients to craft potions, traps, and tools to help you hunt. The landscape of the forest is incredibly diverse. It would have been easy to put a bunch of trees close together, throw in some hanging vines and call it a day. But there's everything from wide open clearings to maze-like enclosures. There are valley-like passages and steep landslides. Each of these areas is like a monster of its own. It completely changes the way you fight. You can take advantage of steep hills to get the high ground and perform devastating aerial attacks, or a monster can corner you in an enclosed space without giving you a chance to get away. Probably one of my favorite things about the map is how seamless it all feels. You can easily get lost in the details, swinging from vines, crawling through caves, and diving under roots. It really feels like a living, breathing forest, which is why no two fights will ever feel the same. And to top it all off, the ancient forest is just one of the many maps you'll explore throughout the game each just as detailed and diverse as the next. When you track down and engage a monster, the combat might take you by surprise if you've never played a monster on a game before. See, up till now, I was used to playing games with characters who have superhuman strength and reaction speed. No matter how big and bulky my armor and weapons were, my character would swing them around as if they were as light as a feather. He was able to dodge and jump and change direction mid-air. Monster Hunter World's combat mechanics are much more realistic. 
They reward calculated decisions, patience, and knowledge about the weapon and the monster you're fighting. And honestly, I fell in love with it. The character you're playing is only human, so when you give them a heavy, bulky weapon like the hammer, they aren't going to be able to hold it in one hand and wail on the monster whenever they want. They will lug it around and use their leverage and momentum to land devastating blows, but swing too much and your hammer gets stuck in the ground, and you'll struggle to pick it back up. Unless you want a one-way trip back to camp, you can't rush face first into a monster and button mash your way to victory. Each weapon has its own set of special moves and combos that cater to a different set of playstyles. While the hammer is good for landing heavy blows to the head, knocking the creature out, the longsword is great for slicing off its tail. And while the dual blades have great combos for hitting the monster's underbelly, the insect blade gives you the ability to jump into the air and hit it from above. For me, the combat system was a breath of fresh air. I love that it rewards players who take the time to really master a weapon. There's nothing that feels better than perfectly timing a counter strike or successfully pulling off your combo without being interrupted. And trust me, being interrupted mid combo is something you're going to want to get used to. Monsters in this game are not pushovers. Give them an opening and you'll find yourself either on your ass or back at camp. The monster AI is truly impressive and really adds to the immersion that you're actually fighting for your life against a monster. As you react to its movements, it's reacting to yours. Monsters will actively move their heads away from you as you try to get in position to bash it in. You finally corner a monster until it realizes it and does a large tail sweep to create room for it to dash away. You're just about to land the last hit of your devastating combo only for the monster to roar a split second before and knock you out of the sky. You're low and trying to heal up while your teammates take aggro? He can smell the blood and immediately jumps on you, not giving you a chance to breathe. There have been numerous times during my playthrough when my friends and I would hit a stone wall. We would die to a monster over and over again not being able to kill it. And as frustrating as it was, I loved it. This was what I was looking for. This was not a wall that could be broken by repeatedly ramming our heads against it. We needed to take a step back and approach it differently, whether that be with new weapon choices, upgraded armor, new potions, new strategy of attack. It was a true hunt, and it required skill. It wasn't a hack and slash with the illusion of death. When you finally take down a monster, you can carve it for its parts. You can use these parts to make new armor and weapons or upgrade previous ones. The parts you get from carving are totally random, but you can get additional parts by breaking off pieces of the monster in battle. I really like the way they did the armor and weapon system here. Each upgrade requires different monster pieces, and you're not guaranteed to get the correct pieces or enough of them on any one hunt. This system adds replayability to each and every monster, so your hunts look more like a juicy pool of monsters to choose from rather than a ladder to climb and never look back on. I know I'm doing a lot of praising and gawking here, but as amazing as this game is, no game is perfect. Monster Hunter World's biggest flaw is its multiplayer system. It's really fun to go on quests and fight monsters together with your friends or even with randoms, but the disconnects are frustrating and rampant. Often you'll join a quest with three other people, which by the way makes the monster more difficult to take down as it will scale its health up to account for multiplayer, but halfway through the hunt you'll get an error and you'll disconnect from the party entirely. Your party members can't rejoin, no new hunters can join, and the monster's health will not go down to recompensate for the loss in players. In lower level hunts it's not so bad, but against higher level monsters I end up just giving up because it would be easier to restart as a solo than to keep fighting this buffed up monster alone. It's clear the developers are masters of gameplay, but still have a bit of work to do on the multiplayer side. It's also painfully obvious that this is a console port. The controls and UI are not made for the keyboard and mouse. When accessing your box and inventory, you're forced to use a series of weird key presses instead of a simple drag and drop system. When using anything from your item bar, you're forced to scroll through the entirety of the bar to find the item that you want. You quickly get used to the UI system and now for me, it's not really a big deal, but I can't shake this feeling of how much better my experience could be with a revamped UI specifically made for the keyboard and mouse. As I'm writing this, honestly, I'm struggling to come up with more things I don't like about this game. No game is perfect, but Monster Hunter World's immersive gameplay and attention to detail completely outshine even its worst flaws. I could sit here for another 3 hours and talk about everything I didn't get to mention like the crafting system, environmental traps, status effects, gems, mantles, the list goes on, but honestly, I don't want to spoil it. 
These are all things that only add more depth and more detail to an already amazing game. And if you're a fan of RPGs or just gaming in general, Monster Hunter World is definitely a game you want to add to your library. I already have almost 150 hours in this game and there's still so much more content to play through and discover. Iceborne is an expansion to Monster Hunter World that's scheduled to come out in autumn of this year, which is great because it gives me time to hunt more monsters and prepare for the next great adventure. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It would really help me out. Also, I stream on Twitch every Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Come hang out. I'll see you guys next time.